The West Sees Iran in a New Way. Published, February 2, 2023. By M. K. Badrakamar. The Wall Street Journal reported from Tehran on Wednesday that a lethal crackdown and an ailing economy have quieted anti-government street demonstrations organized protests have largely tapered off. The paradox is, this interpretation is widely applicable in the contemporary world situation, including many G7 countries. How can one pretend there are no protester grievances in Britain or France today, and, yet, how come they are mute? The Western narrative never cared to admit that Iran is ruled by elected governments. The big question is, would such street violence have erupted in Iran without the covert support and coordination by foreign intelligence agencies? It is pointless to discuss Iran's politics while in denial mode about the whole history of foreign interference in that country's internal affairs. Michel Foucault's famous essay on the Iranian Revolution What Are the Iranians Dreaming About? begins with the author's exchange with an Iranian activist in the streets of Tehran heaving with revolutionary fervor in 1978, they will never let go of us of their own will. No more than they did in Vietnam. I, Foucault, wanted to respond that they are even less ready to let go of you than Vietnam, because of oil. Today, four decades later, this historical reality continues. Arguably, it may now become even more complicated and intractable, as Iran's oil and gas are set to combine with Russia's, another energy superpower. Meanwhile, Associated Press reported today that Iran and Russia are also moving toward linking their banking systems, turning their back on the petrodollar. Read the U.S. Energy Information Administration data, here and here, to know why the AP report matters. Simply put, Almost a quarter of the world's oil reserves and around 40% of the world's gas reserves may potentially be traded outside the Western banking system if Russian and Iranian policies work in tandem, dealing a body blow to the world currency, American dollar. Suffice to say, there is no question that the protests in Iran were a Western reaction to the emerging alliance between Iran and Russia. Now that the protests over hijab have tapered off, the modus operandi will shift from color revolution back to the classic mode of sabotage and assassinations, especially after Benjamin Netanyahu's return to power in Israel. The burgeoning military cooperation between Iran and Russia puts Tehran on Washington's crosshairs. In the context of the Ukraine conflict, the West see Iran in a new way. Indeed, the Russian interest in getting Iran on board the Moscow brokered process of Turkish Syrian rapprochement underscores that the Kremlin has jettisoned whatever past reserve it would have about aligning with Iran in geopolitical projects. On Tuesday, Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov stated at a press conference with the visiting Egyptian Foreign Minister Sami Shokri in Moscow that Russia, Iran, and Turkey are members of the Astana Troika, which has been handling the Syrian settlement. Therefore, I consider it absolutely logical that any further communication on bringing relations between Turkey and Syria back to normal will also involve Russia and Iran. As for the timeframes and specific formats of participation, be it at the military, diplomatic or any other level, they are currently being specified. We have a full understanding that it is necessary to move step by step so that every step forward should yield specific, albeit minor, results. What the US and its Western allies, and Israel, will find particularly galling will be the warm words of welcome extended by Turkey to this development, which highlights the ascendance of Astana Troika, in the geopolitics of Syria. Turkish President Recep Erdogan's foreign policy advisor Ibrahim Kalin has said, we are pleased that Iran is joining this process. Iran is an important side. I think it will be able to contribute to this process. The participation of Iran in the negotiating process, which is held with the mediation of Russia, will make it easier. As part of this process, we are talking about ensuring the security of our borders, the neutralization of the terrorist threat with respect to our country, the return of Syrian refugees, a worthy and safe return. Kalin disclosed that a foreign minister-level meeting between Russia, Turkey, Syria and Iran can be expected within the next few weeks. Unsurprisingly, 
a convergence of interests between the U.S., Israel and Kurds, and Kiev, to settle scores with Iran is only to be expected. The early signs are already there. According to Iran's defense ministry, three drones were involved in the attack on Friday at about midnight on a military facility in the city of Isfahan. It said one drone was destroyed by air defense systems and two were caught by defense traps, causing minor damage to a building. There were no casualties. Pentagon spokesperson Brigadier General Patrick Ryder promptly said the U.S. military played no part in the strikes but declined to speculate further. However, Wall Street Journal quoted unnamed U.S. officials and people familiar with the operation as saying Israel had carried out the attack. The New York Times also named Mossad, Israel's intelligence service, citing senior U.S. intelligence officials here. Isfahan province is home to a large airbase, a major missile production complex and several nuclear sites. Iran's official Erna news agency said the drones had targeted an ammunition manufacturing plant. The BBC highlighted that the attack comes amid heightened tensions over Iran's nuclear program, and its supply of arms to Russia's war in Ukraine. Nor news, which is wired into Iran's national security establishment, disclosed on Wednesday that forensic experts have matched the body, engines, power supply and navigation system of the downed UAVs and precisely determined their manufacturer and revealed important clues. A second report by Nor News on Wednesday went into further details according to which Kurdish terrorist elements based in Iraqi Kurdistan were deployed by a foreign security service to smuggle parts of the drones and explosive materials across the border through one of the inaccessible routes in northwest Iran, which were later assembled in an equipped workshop using trained forces. It seems Iran's security establishment had some inkling of such a terrorist attack on the basis of the interrogation in August of a terrorist Kurdish group, working for the Israeli agency Mossad. However, a stunning dimension to this sordid affair is that a top aide to the Ukrainian President Zelensky linked the Isfahan attack to the alleged supply of Iranian drones to Russia. An unnamed Iranian official has since reacted that unless Kiev disowned any such linkage, Tehran too may adopt a new approach that is appropriate to the behavior of the Kiev government. Not much ingenuity is needed to connect the dots in the Isfahan attack, Ukrainian and Israeli intelligence, and the American masterminds in Kiev, operated through the Kurdish groups based in Iraqi Kurdistan, which have long-standing links to both the US and Mossad, and sleeper cells within Iran. The bottom line is that today, Almost anything concerning Iran's security would have a foreign dimension, albeit hidden behind hijab or rubrics of democracy and human rights. That is what history testifies. No doubt, time present and time past are linked in such a way in Iran that both could be present in time future, and, to borrow from English poet T.S. Eliot, the time future can as well be deemed as contained in time past. This podcast was brought to you by BG Media. Download the BG Media app today or visit barglobal.net for more podcasts.